Questions 21 through 25 of the 1999 Grade 8 Goss Math Contest is what I will discuss in this video. The sum of seven consecutive positive integers is always. All right, let's write out seven consecutive positive integers. So you'd have n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3, n plus 4, n plus 5, and n plus 6. And this is seven consecutive positive integers. And the sum is going to be when you add them all up like that. So let's add them. How many n's do we have? We have seven n's. And then we have to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. And that is 21. So at this point, we can factor a 7, and that would give us n plus 3. So whatever s is, whatever the sum is, it's always going to be a multiple of 7, because it's going to be 7 times something. So therefore, the answer to this is b. In the diagram, ac is equal to cb is equal to 10, where ac and cb are each the diameter of the small equal semicircles, so these semicircles right here. The diameter of the large semicircle is the full AB. In traveling from path A to B, it is possible to take one of two paths. One path goes along the semicircular arc from A to B, so like that. A second path goes along the semicircular arcs from A to C, and then along the semicircular arc from C to B. The difference in these two paths is, okay, so we need to figure out the distance of the first path, and then compare it to the second path, and then see what is the difference. So the first path, which is basically right there, is just the half of the circumference of the large circle. So if you remember, circumference is equal to pi times diameter. So if we're trying to get half of the circumference, we just divide by 2, like that. And the di diameter of the large circle is a to b, like that. So a C and CB are 10, so the full AB is 20. So therefore, this is 10 pi. All right? So that first path that basically goes along from here to here is 10 pi. So now we have to figure out the second path, path number two, which is going from A to C, and then going from C to B like that. What is that one? Well, that one basically is a full circle's diameter, because a full circle's circumference, rather, because you've got half the circumference there, and then you've got another half there. So you just have to figure out the circumference of that small circle. Circumference is pi times diameter. Diameter of this smaller circle, or smaller semicircle, is 10. So 10 pi like that. So the red path is 10 pi, and the green path is also 10 pi. So the difference between the length of these two paths is 0, 10 pi minus 10 pi, 0, like that. So 22 is E. Kalin writes down all of the integers from 1 to 1,000 that have 4 as the sum of their digits. If A over B in lowest terms is the fraction of these numbers that are a prime, then A plus B is. Okay, so let's try to understand this question first. 
she's writing down all the numbers from 1 to 1,000 that have 4 as the sum of their digits. So what does that mean? Well, for example, if a number, say, is 301, the sum of its digits, in this case, are 4. 3 plus 0 plus 1 is 4. That's what that means, 4 as the sum of their digits. So we have to now list all of these. So let's break it up into three categories. The numbers that are between 1 and 9, the numbers are, that are between 10 and 99, and the numbers that are between 100 and 999. Okay. Now, between 1 and 9, is there any number that has some of their digits as 4? The only one I think is 4, right? The sum of the digits, there's only one digit, sum is 4. How about 10 to 99? 1, 3, 13 would do it because 1 plus 3 is 4. 22 because 2 plus 2 is 4. Uh, what else we got? 31, I believe, would do it. 3 plus 1 is 4. And 40, 4 plus 0 is 4. So I think that's it for numbers between 10 and 99. Now we have to find all the ones from 100 to 1 to to 999 basically or 100 to 1000 103 1 plus 0 plus 3 is 4 121 one, that would also do it 130 112 202 211 Two two zero three zero one three one zero and finally four zero zero. I think this is it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I believe that's it. So how many do we have in total? Well, we have one that was between one and nine, four that are between 10 and 99, and 100 to 999 produced 10. So we have a total of 15 numbers between 100, sorry, between one and 1,000 that have four as the sum of their digits, okay? Now we have to figure out how many of these are prime? How many of these 15 numbers are prime numbers? Okie dokie. Well, if a number is even, it's not a prime, obviously, because it can be divisible by 2. So this is not even. Now, this is not a prime. All the even ones we don't need to worry about because those cannot be prime. Those will be divisible by 2. Now, let's look at the other numbers and see if any of those are prime. Is 13 a prime? Yes, it is. Is 31 a prime? Yes. Is 103 a prime? Yes. Is 121 a prime? No, because 121 is divisible by 11. Because 121 divided by 11 is 11. So that's not a prime. Is 211 a prime? Yes, it is. Is 301 a prime? Uh, no, because it's divisible by 7. 301 divisible by 7 is 43. So the only ones that are primes were 13, 31, 103, and 211. So four of these out of the 15. So A over B is the fraction of these numbers that are prime. So how many were prime? Four out of 15. So that is what A over B is. Now they want us to find A plus B. All right, A plus B would just be 4 plus 15. And therefore, the answer is 19. So for 23, the answer is E.
Raymond's financial institution publishes a list of service charges as shown in the table. For her first 25 transactions, she uses auto debit three times as often as she writes checks. She also writes as many checks as she makes withdrawals. After her 25th transaction, she begins to make single transactions. What is the smallest number of transactions she needs to make so that her monthly service charges will exceed the $15.95 all-in-one fee? Okay, so auto debit is what she is doing first. Auto debit three times as often as writing checks. All right and she writes as many checks as she makes cash withdrawals. All right, so if she is making three times as many auto debits as she writes checks, we can represent that as say 3M, and this is M. And she writes as many checks as she makes cash withdrawals, so those two are equal, all right? So for example, if she wrote five checks, she does auto debit 15 times and she does cash withdrawals five times. We don't know how many, so that's why I let it equal M. But we do know that this is talking about the first 25 transactions. So 3M plus M plus M is equal to 25. And therefore 5M is equal to 25, so M is equal to 5. So auto debit is 15 times, checks, she writes five of them, and cash withdrawals, she does five. Now we get into the mathematics in terms of the prices, the services. For each auto debit, she's being charged 60 cents. So 15 times 60 cents, which is nine dollars all right for checks she's being charged 50 cents so five times 0 0.5 is 2.5 two dollars and fifty cents and for cash withdrawals she's being charged 45 cents so you've got five times 0 0.45 which is 2.25 so if you add all these up, 9 plus 2.5 plus 2.25, you get 13.75. All right? Now she's being charged $15.95 every month regardless of what she does. It's an all-in-one fee. But so far she's only spent $13.75. So what they're asking is how many transactions does she make, does she need to make in order for her to exceed the $15.95. Okay, well so far she has spent $13.75. Let's calculate how much more she needs to spend before she meets that $15.95. And we would do that by subtracting $15.95 minus $13.75, and that is $2.20. So she needs to accumulate two dollars and twenty cents more service charges in order for her to meet this fifteen ninety five monthly charge so how do we do that in the smallest way possible with the smallest number of transactions well if you look at this table the most expensive thing is an auto debit so if you accumulate more of those you'll be able to eat up the cost more quickly so if I do auto debit, say, four times, that will be how much? Well, it will be four times 0 0.6, which is $2.40. And if I already have spent $13.75 and I spend an additional $2.40, I will have 13.75 plus 2.40. And that will indeed exceed $15.95.
as it will be exactly $16.15. So I had my original 25 transactions and I made an additional four for a total of 29. So the answer is A. And the key to this question is that they want the smallest number of tra transactions. I could make more. I could, you know, make more by using checks and cash withdrawals, but it would give me more than 29 transactions, and we wanted the smallest number of transactions. For identical isosceles triangles, border a square of side 6 centimeters as shown. When the four triangles are folded up, they meet at a point to form a pyramid with a square base. If the height of this pyramid is 4 centimeters, the total area of the four triangles and square is. So first, let's draw this shape after the four triangles have been folded up to form a pyramid. So the shape will look approximately like this. It's not perfectly drawn to scale, but that's okay. And this red perpendicular that I drew represents the height. And they have told us that this height is equal to 4. And now what I'll do is I'll try to make a a triangle by drawing a line from the base of that height to the edge of the square. And then I'll join the absolute tip of the pyramid to the end of that triangle. And this triangle is the fundamental aspect of the question that will help us figure out everything. Now, what do we know so far? We know that this is 6, and since this was the center of the square, the height will go all the way down to the center, we know that from here to here is 3. It's just half. And I know it doesn't perfectly look like that, but that's okay. Now, we also know that h is equal to 4. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out this distance right there. And we'll call that y. So h squared plus 3 squared is equal to y squared. h is 4. So we've got 16 plus 9 is y squared. And therefore y is 25 like that, y squared, and therefore y is 5. So that is going to help us figure out all the things that we need. So what are they asking for? The total area of the four triangles plus the square. Okay? So the four triangles, each triangle is one-half base times height. And the square is just 6 times 6, the area. So 6 times 6. So 4 times 1 half. What is the base of this triangle? The base is from here to here, which is 6. And the height is from there to there, which is, we figured out, 5 plus 6 times 6, which is 36. So this looks like 2 times 6 times 5, which is 60, plus 36, and therefore this is 96. So 96 is the area that they're asking for, so the answer here is C.